what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of BS for Build. Today's episode goal is to make the second manual Huracan in the world. You guys know we very proudly made the first manual Huracan in the world. A lot of people have been striving to make the second, but uh, I don't I don't think that they've made it there yet. I'm not 100% sure, but we're gonna be second on this one. Uh, you guys know that it was running in the last episode, but we have not, you know, got it to clutch in, switch gears, move forward, move backwards. That's the goal for today's episode. Stay tuned. We're gonna get started real quick out the gate here. Kyle's gonna be focusing on our um, roll cage foot pads. We need to put bolts through all of these and there's a piece that goes underneath. The specs and the rules for the racing organization, we're building this vehicle for them, say everything's gotta be a sandwich plate with the bolts through it. So we're gonna be doing, uh, uh, Kyle's gonna be doing that, prepping that. Oscar is working on an inline fuse for our power cable. We were, we were rolling a little bit sketchy earlier in our last episode. We did not have a fuse in the main power cable. So he's gonna get that installed. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish the job I started three or four days ago. I'm gonna install the Mishimoto transmission cooler in the back of the engine right here. Trans cooler mounted up. Some people said they didn't think it would get enough airflow. It'll get enough airflow, don't worry about it. This is this trans runs pretty cold as it is anyway. So I was told by a specialist on these that you know, cooler you don't even have to have, but it's nice to have. So Kyle's still clearly working on the roll cage stuff. Oscar's got his inline fuse done. So next steps are one of them is getting the radiator mounted, but to mount the radiator, we also need to be able to attach our overflow tank. Gotta have an overflow tank. So I am gonna, I'm gonna do some welding. I can weld aluminum. I know how to take weld a little bit. So I'm gonna weld on an attachment to the side of our tank right here that'll allow me to mount the, uh, the overflow tank. Oscar's working on something special. So we have a sponsor sending us a shift knob. A lot of you guys may have experienced the postage is not what it used to be. So I don't think it's gonna make it here in time. So we're gonna try and make our own. Now that we have the mill and the lathe, we can do a little bit more than we used to. Um, and this, so this was the original shift knob that Oscar's dad made us for the Burnticon. And, uh, and then we replaced it with one with a little, a couple more grooves. So what we're gonna do is machine, now this is a different fitting style. This is kind of a Porsche style fitting and it actually normally accepts a press on, uh, but we're gonna use a slide on and set screws inside this little groove right here. So Oscar's gonna, kind of cut this off and then make a channel within it that will house the shaft and then some holes for some set screws. Enjoy housing the shaft, Oscar. overflow tank on there so we welded that band of aluminum through here I did most of the welding but Oscar did do some touch-up so we got that band on there hose clamps around this hold it securely right there and that's good now we just need to run a hose from here to here I accidentally threw the hose away yesterday so I'll go get some more tomorrow now I'm gonna go ahead and move on I gotta clean that up a little bit I'm gonna move on to mounting this thing I did something pretty cool at home this is 3d printed rubber um, all these are rubber bushings, isolators, so you can see the bolt goes right through the center piece there and the rubber piece goes on here. So for instance, this rubber piece goes right here, slots in there. On the back, another one goes right here. And then the bolt goes through there and uh, it's fully rubber isolated so the metal bolt doesn't hit any of the aluminum and it also helps our radiator uh, you know, have a little bit of absorption. Some of these are angled to match the back of the firewall and then on the other side of the firewall we have angled pieces right here to accept the uh, nut and the washer. So pretty cool little setup that I 3D printed out. I hope it works. I'm gonna go ahead and install it right now and we'll see if everything fits up snug. Got 
got the radiator mounted up with the isolators. That thing is so securely mounted. I'm really happy with how the whole 3D printing the isolators, you know, experiment came out and that is really, really on there. Oscar finished up the shift knob. Uh, we need to throw a set screw in here. We had a few trials and tribulations along this thing. Me and Oscar had two totally different designs in our head. And, uh, but I, I really do like the way they came out and the length is good and everything. But and then the sad part is we're gonna be replacing this really soon when the other one comes in the mail. But uh, it looks great. It's gonna be very functional for our race this next week. So that's awesome. We gotta throw a set screw in here and then it won't be able to come on or off and then I'll go ahead and install the shifter. Moving on, Oscar is going to be working on some major adjustments to the suspension. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you once we're done why we are doing this, but it's all to get more travel out of our axle. Our axle going through from here through this hole, top to bottom, is what limits this vehicle's travel the most. We wanna have all the travel that we can, so we're gonna make some modifications. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna be building us a, a dash center console. Let's call it a center console. It's a housing for the dash, so the dash needs to be hard mounted in here, something like this. I want it to come down at an angle and then come into the tunnel. Eventually the tunnel will be covered, but we're not gonna be working on that for this race, so we need to get the button panel right here and this like right about like that. It's time for an update. So yesterday was Saturday, today is Sunday, so it's a nice quiet day. It's Father's Day, so Oscar's at home hanging out with his kid. And we've been working crazy hours. We've been doing 14 hour days in the shop all week long uh, to try and get ready for the gambler. Shortly after the gambler, hopefully the car survives, and then shortly after the gambler, we're heading out to Vegas to uh, do a test lap of the Mint 400 track. So we obviously have a very real deadline. We gotta get this thing done, and we've just been grinding. And the stupid dash has been just driving me crazy, crazy. I will show you the work that Oscar's doing on the control arms when he wraps that up uh, tomorrow. Where are they? They're over there. But for now, let's talk about this dash a little bit. We got the screen mounted and a metal skeleton like that. And I wanted to mount something kind of on the inside, but then my skeleton didn't go down far enough to, to have a nice clean connection with the tunnel. So I was back to the drawing board. Then I put the steel over it, thought the steel would be great and welded it in. And then last night I hit it too hard with a flap disc and it left some indentations, which I didn't like. So today I came in and decided that we should have a facade because facades are good for dash screens like that. That way you can poke holes in the steel, do different things that you need. And then if you want to change your configuration, you just change out the facade. So I got this all specked out, a little piece of carbon fiber put my holes in it, went to drill my holes, and they were like just on the edge of my skeleton. And you guys know what it's like drilling through one hole and then like into a wall sideways. It doesn't work. It ended up breaking some welds and getting really mad. So I have one more piece of carbon fiber. This is my last try at doing this. We're gonna move the bolt holes in more centrally and I think it's actually gonna look better anyways and it'll be a lot easier on us. This guy goes smack dab here in the middle. That's all we have for now to go in here. We may later change it up and go this guy up here and a radio down below or radio or this guy down here and a radio up top. That's why having a little carbon fiber facade is a good idea. So I have one last try. I think I've learned enough mistakes. I've probably made about 30 mistakes on this dash. It took, I, I worked all day yesterday on the dash. But today, I shall wrap this thing up. I call it a dash. It's actually the center console. The dash I got to design and 3D print later tonight. It's 
Center console is finally finished. I'm so happy. It only took me a day and a half. It's really, really strong in here. The carbon fiber does pick up some, uh, some smudges, but you know, it's not a beauty contest, it's a race car. So touch screen up here, giant, giant, giant touch screen. And then our control panel right there, controlling all of our buttons for our PDM. Awesome. Fast forward a little bit and we are home back in the Twitch streaming uh, center. Follow me on Twitch, BS for Bill, you can, hence the green screen. Uh, we're gonna try and 3D print and 3D model a dash surround. Finally, we are doing the dash now for this mini display. So it's, it's, this is the driver focused display, shows engine critical things. Um, so the driver can have those few things right in front of them where the middle display is more, it's actually probably more for the passenger to be monitoring as we're racing. So. Uh, Gonna try some new printing technology, trying to print something hollow. I don't know, we'll see if we even get there, but I gotta model something cool that'll bolt into our dash and hold this guy. In the shop and our 3d print is a reality except for i tried to print it hollow and it did not like this back part it got pretty flimsy there's a terrible seam right here just looks terrible so i'm re 3d printing another version of this at home right now it takes 15 hours to print one of these so uh hopefully it'll be ready by tomorrow but this was a draft this was something to test and the test fit went really well uh, with its placement, once we drill a hole to clear that bolt in there, it looks really, really good from the driver's standpoint, not blocking any vision, um, and it holds the holds the screen really well right in front of the driver. So that is pretty much perfect. I just need to print a good enough quality one of these, sand it up, probably give it a coat of paint. Oscar wrapped up the modifications to the uh, upper control arm. Uh, we're going to eventually box this in to make it look like it was all designed and kind of made in the same uh, method, but for now, it, that is a plenty, plenty, plenty strong for an upper control arm. So that's that's good. And then you can see he, he notched out around there so we get as much travel for the axle as we can. We'll show you that when we start maxing everything out. So now it's time to make axles. We've got custom machine parts, lots of them. We've got custom ordered CVs. We've got custom axle shafts made. We've got all the pieces of the puzzle. We just got to put them all together and hopefully we'll have some really badass axles. These are by far the most expensive axles we've ever bought, but uh, hopefully they're going to work great. So let's get them assembled. We've got axles, finally. We worked on troubleshooting these for so long, figuring out which pieces needed to go like connect to connect to connect. So it all started with this. This is a uh, very, very high angle uh, CV joint. So I bought four of these um, and then we built an adapter to adapt to go from this to the Graziano transaxle. Then from there, uh, we just needed to get um, shafts made. So we got some shafts made. And on the other side, since these are these wheel hubs, the wheel bearings are off of like a Ford Mustang or a Ford Ranger, um, they're Ford splined. So uh, what you saw was Oscar weld. Basically, I bought some Ford Mustang axles. We chopped it off of the snub and then we got a machined uh, piece to adapt on and then we welded it all together. So. Some DIY, a lot of ordering of parts. These are beefy as all hell, should handle a thousand horsepower, no problem. Uh, they're very heavy, but they allow us to get all the travel. So now you can see why Oscar did this change right here. We gotta flip this nut and bolt around, but this is here to show you where we were before. This piece right here was over here and it hit the axle really soon. So um, once we move that, we won't hit the axle and we can go all the way up and all the way down. Now the shock is the limiting factor in the travel, which is how the vehicle was designed. So we have like 17 inches of travel or something crazy in the back. I've never ordered axle shafts before and we waited till the very last day to test these out. So I'm very pleased to say that they fit and we're getting all the travel out of them. So that is fantastic. Next up. We're working on making the second manual hurricane in the world, we need a shifter. And to shift, we need shifter cables. These are the little end pieces that get moved around by the shifter cables. And these fittings are silly. They're like 
Audi only parts and they don't work very well so I'm switching it over to Porsche. So I got to do a little bit of BS for Buildy modifications. I'm going to go ahead and pop these off, drill these out, and then we can put our own fittings on the end. We have to to run our fancy nice cables that I want to run. New shifter linkage is installed. So I, uh, this bracket had a little bit of rust in it, pulled it off, painted it, uh, redid a couple of these ends so I could attach them with nut and a bolt rather than the fancy Lamborghini weirdness that they have. The, this linkage is way, way better quality and it's gonna have a lot better shift feel to it. So um, this is all solid and installed and awesome. Good. Now that's done, we need to move on to modifying the bump stops. Our bump stops need to go down a little bit more. Now that we made all these changes, we know exactly the, the travel of our axle and we need to limit the suspension earlier. So we need to cut. You can see where we've made a cut line already. We're gonna go ahead and cut it off here, move it down, rebox it in in a cool looking way and adjust our bump stops down to stop the uh, suspension from snapping our axle on our frame. The bump stop adjustments have been made. It looks fantastic. That, that is a really, really hard job to do to, to modify it, move it down so much. And it came out really, really good. You can basically not even tell that we had to do that. So that is awesome. Uh, the guys, uh, I am currently working on the shifter, which I'll show you later. I'm kind of hiding it, uh, getting the shifter cables and the shifter adjusted so it shifts nicely. The guys are going to work on limiting straps. So on a vehicle like this, you don't want to make the shock be the last thing that holds this whole control arm and wheel and tire assembly when you go off of a jump. It's going to max out and you want to use a strap that will hold from the frame to the lower control arm so you don't blow your shock apart. Basically what will happen from what I've been told is the shock will just rip itself apart after after you go off a few jumps because think how much weight is on the bottom of this that's pulling down on the shock. So we're gonna have limiting straps on all four corners. We're gonna figure out exactly where they should go and weld them in and bolt them in. Oscar's got the first of the limiting straps installed and this shifter is mounted. This is such a cool unit out of numeric racing. A long time ago, I was talking with my transmission guy about a shifter and he told me about it. numeric racing, said they are the best in the business and they did not disappoint. I hit them up, asked them if they wanted to be a part of this build and they said yes and they sent us this amazing, this is all billet with ball bearing uh, moving mechanism, all built aluminum. It's like buttery smooth shifts. Now they primarily make stuff for Porsches, but they can do any custom application. This was super easy. So they sent me the shifter. I just found out where it like felt comfortable. And then I told them the cable lengths that I wanted and they like precision made these cables that all fit up exactly perfect. I installed them backwards at first and got a little worried. And then when I installed them the right way, it was like no sweat, super, super easy. And this, I mean, it just looks amazing obviously. So I want to give a shout out to Numeric Racing. Like I said, they primarily make stuff for Porsches, but if you have a custom application, they can also build it for you like as well, like what we just did with a crazy one-off off LS swap Lamborghini. It was super, super simple. So link will be in the description if you want to check it out. Porsche owners, make sure you check out their whole website. They got a bunch of other stuff for you there too, like pedals and all sorts of great stuff. So I'm really looking forward to using this. And obviously it's like a, it's a showpiece. It's like a piece of art. So it's probably the closest I'm going to ever get to owning a Koenigsegg, I think. All right, next up I'm going to install my dash. Oh, I haven't shown you guys this. 
well, as I, as I drop it. So what I did was another 3D print and I printed it solid, not a shell this time. A little of the support came through, but it almost looks like the texture you would have on like a, like a quilted uh, a leather or something. So I'm not too mad about it. I gave it a little bit of sand up, a little spray down, whatever. It's just temporary. Um, and it holds the dash perfectly. So, or it holds the, the mini screen perfectly. So this is the driver center, driver focused dash. I'm gonna go ahead and mount it right here, right in front of my steering wheel. Got the dash installed and you can see how it holds the mini screen real nicely. And we did a bunch of other stuff like cleaning the interior and throwing the seats in there and the harnesses and mounting the exhaust or that's not exhaust. It's it's a little late guys, it's a little late. Fuel filler and ran the clutch soft line and fill and bled the clutch out. Bunch of good stuff. I know I told you guys at the beginning of this episode that we were gonna turn it on and, and move it forward and move it backwards. I have all the faith in the world that it could do that right now. The thing is we don't have any mufflers and it's 3 a.m. So we have to call this episode here and we'll, that, that'll be, this is a teaser for the next episode where we're gonna test drive the Jumpicon for the first time. So make sure to tune in for the next episode. If you're not subscribed already, hit subscribe. That way you'll be notified when the next episode and there's a bell thing, who cares? Anyways, see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching.